hello and welcome to another single eight so your name is my name is michael davis your name is rick kane and your name is kind of mail y'all so today on the single eight show i thought it would be good to talk through who our advocates are and I actually had a reason that I wanted to have this conversation. This past Tuesday night, I made my first appearance at a new school board gathering. And I went out to speak for our LGBTQ and transgendered siblings uh, at the meeting in Temecula, California. There's many places that have been on the the spotlight of um, conservative um, uh, backlash uh, in school systems and Temecula is one of those places. Uh, So very recently I started attending uh, the Temecula School Board to advocate a little bit more for LGBTQIA plus uh, siblings and I although I do not live there I am a part of the work community there. I have a very strong presence uh, within the community of Temecula, which still gives me a voice at these gatherings. So as I have been doing this, I found it, I thought it would be very interesting to hear from you as a high school student, from Rick Kane as a college student, and from me as an adult about different programs are generalized if you don't feel comfortable saying the program's name what are the programs that advocate for you the, does that kind of make sense to you both yeah as this is the single eight show why don't you share the first one what is a program that advocates for you as a high school student we really only have one at my school and that the one that I have that I am the VP with VP of the Gender and Sexuality Alliance. The GSA, the Gender and Sexuality Alliance. That is what it's called at Single H's school and other schools. It is the Gay Straight Alliance. Yeah. I like gender and sexuality better. It differentiates identity and sexuality, yeah. which it really needs to be. I've found in a lot of the arguments that individuals do that are on an anti stance, they try to group together gender and sexuality and really distort what some friends' journeys are. So talk a little bit about the Gender and Sexuality Alliance at your school. Mr. Vice President. We are really like kind of the people who are willing to step up and advocate because of, I think it's also of being like the, still like the newest school in the district despite being a good decade. <laughs> that school is only 10 years old. It's only yeah. 10 years old. It doesn't really have, yet we have a strong adult group that goes but we still only kind of have us at our school to to do anything and it's still like it's still young it will grow over time but we are kind of currently we are those who are outly supportive are who we have yeah so you're your gender sexuality alliance and I really like that phrasing way better yeah Rick Kane one from the college level for for four um there's I don't know like there's resource centers like all kind of in they're all kind of grouped in the same area like there's a transfer student one there is a person like POC one and there is an LGBT one that does a lot of like events and stuff so that LGBT people can meet and find each other and it they have like um, 
they have access to different things like they have pamphlets and stuff they can point you in the right direction if you need something they have like equipment and stuff like that available to help people feel safe and comfortable good yeah. um that's that's strong and, like, and no... so it's different resource centers so it's not all lgtbq but like whatever need that you have yeah you can there's a to. research center for that that's that's pretty awesome that's very cool um and I'm glad that they have different groups too. So they have little mixers. They have bowling night and dances and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Game, gaming. Gaming. Gaming nights. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start very vague, but not too vague. Mine as an adult is random people that are willing to just speak out. And and in some ways, I I group myself into this group. I as far as as Temecula goes, I am a, a, a city member, a civic member, but I am also just a random person willing to speak out. And if anybody has a passion, you can find out when your city hall meetings are, you can find out when your school board meetings are, and you can go, and as long as you have some connection to the community, you have a voice in these meetings. And you can go in and be a voice. Make sure that you're watching YouTube. Go to the these meetings' websites for their minutes of their pre previous meetings. And you can learn a lot about what the situations are. All right, single H, you got another one. It's Do you have another uh, the, uh, Afro... Uh, ally group that helps you. Good fill them out again. Tran Family Support Services. Yes. They are everywhere throughout the country. If you need help, go to them. They are more than willing to do it. Please do it. Please. Trans Family uh, Support Services helped our entire family. Uh, when Single H came out, you guys that have been on this journey with us, uh, we turn to them for guidance and and conversation. We turn to them for guidance and care for single age. There was a lot that we did uh, through them that helped us take care of single age, even to the point of uh, the path to go for uh, his transitioning journey, the path to go for name change, uh, Trans Family Services is amazing, and they're in multiple areas. Yeah. Multiple areas. Uh, Rick Kane, give me, give me another. Um, Any? I don't really know. Okay, that's fair, because it, it's hard to find these things. Yeah. It, it really is, and you, you hit the biggest one for you. Um, there are different clubs and things that exist on campuses, and even though they might not say uh, uh, LGBTQIA+ affirming, you know because of their topics that they are LGBTQIA+ affirming. So, by uh, any group that you could find, anything from uh, game night to maybe even a Rocky Horror uh, Shadow Cast Club. Uh, there, there, you can find it from its topic and kind of differentiate if they are going to be supportive or not. You, uh, you probably would not go to the Young Republicans Club no. to and find an affirming group. But I'm sure that there's social justice clubs. I'm sure that there is uh, 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 Democrats for Liberty. Yeah. Or something? Is there stuff like that? Uh, kind of, yeah. Yeah. Not like a club that meets all the time, but like during like club rush at the beginning of the year, there's like a bunch of like places that have tables out that you can do that. And you can kind of dis differentiate from their theme if they'll be supportive or not. Yeah. Yeah. So mine... Mine, I am going to talk about uh, 
resource centers as well, but there are adult resource centers, there's community resource centers. The, the town that we live in, and I've talked about this group, is a North County LGBTQIA plus resource center. There is a resource center uh, where that I serve in the community that I am, I am working and advocating in. And all of these resource centers are kind of popping around and they're open spots of safety. Sometimes their presence isn't always safe for them, but they try to present a safe environment for anyone that comes through their doors. So I would, as Rick Kane said, but more for cities and, and, and towns, any um, resource center, LGBTQIA plus resource center, is a, a great avenue of finding allies and support. So as an example of that support, I want to share with you a little bit of a speech that I had recently given at the school board meeting that I attended this past Tuesday night. Uh, so this is the sounds of someone that just cares, a sound that someone that wants to give a different image of the way things can be. Uh, when I go to these meetings, I wear my pastor's collar so that they can even hear an image of how faith sees things differently. I come at this at a far more progressive voice than other churches have, and people need to know that every faith-based voice isn't exclusionary. Uh, so uh, please enjoy uh, uh, hearing this little bit of a moment of what I shared this past Board, thank you for allowing me to come forward to speak to you this evening. My name is Michael Davis. I am the pastor of Temecula United Methodist Church. This evening, I would like to share with you my concern about the reach of bullying behavior in our schools and the emotional trauma that comes to our children who face it daily. I would like to also express my concern about how that reach is visibly affected this setting. Our main focus should be to coordinate a structure that truly prioritizes the best interest of our children free from personalized agendas. The only way to care for all the children in our schools is to support safe spaces where they can have conversations that they need. In many cases, these safe spaces are not found in their homes. Displacement and physical harm can result when deeply personal information is stolen from one individual and shared in places where they wish it to remain private. We have mandated reporting laws in place for the true safety of our kids. A person's gender, gender expression is not a life-threatening concern. Requesting a name, a special name, is not a life-threatening concern. However, sharing information inappropriately or stealing a person's voice to expose their personal journey can have serious consequences. Thank you for allowing me to share with you. So those were some of the voices, my voice, of the dear friends who are trying to go out and care and advocate. And we kind of encourage you to advocate as well. Uh, we want to make sure that everyone is registered to vote. One of the best ways to advocate is to make sure that you can go where you can make the most distant difference. Your town may not have a LGBTQIA plus resource center, but every town has the opportunity to go to the voting box and to make a difference. Uh, so we want to make sure that you know that if you turn 18 before November the 5th, you have the opportunity right now to go and register and vote. You have the opportunity to use your voice and to make a difference in this coming election. This year, probably more so than any other year, as we deal with worries and concerns that are connected from everything to Project 2025 to local races that put people in charge of our school boards and city councils that can make it so much harder for our LGBTQIA plus siblings to live comfortably, we need to go out and have our voices heard in the voting boxes this year. So please remember that if you turn 18 years old 
before November the 5th, you have the opportunity to have your voice heard. So please become one of the advocates in the voting box. Make your voice heard by clicking the boxes and voting for the individuals that have affirming agendas. And as we deal with the fears from everything from Project 2025 to the limitations of uh, um, of reproductive rights to gender affirming care, we need all of our voices to be heard. So please vote. Please make sure you're registered and please go be active and present. Thank you for listening to us this week. For Rick Kane, 400 Mills, my name is Michael Davis. This was The Single H Show. Everybody have a great week.